we we are now going to be starting the uh, final unit in our statistics class and this is on correlation and regression so if you uh, remember way back to the beginning of the semester there was correlation studies and then experimental studies and um, in the in the last section we learned how to test for the difference between two sample means and that is the sort of technique that you would use to analyze the results of an experimental study to see if there was a significant difference between the two groups well in this chapter we're gonna look at some of the math that you can use to analyze and use the results of a correlation study and I'm gonna start with this example this is one that I use when I introduce the idea of a correlation study and I really like this example um, we're going to kind of use this as as an example to introduce each of the different things as we go through uh, the section and it just gives you a nice example of, of not just how to analyze this but also how why this sort of thing might be useful um, so this was a researcher he wanted to know if there was a relationship between the number of hours uh, that a student works at a job and their grade point average and so he took a sample of college students in this case we assume it's a sample of five college students and for each college student he gets the number of hours they work and their grade point average okay and then you generate this set of bivariate data two two variables and these are like ordered pairs these are like X coordinates in an ordered pair and Y coordinates and so in chapter two we learned how you could get a visual picture of this um, so this axis the horizontal axis represents the the first column here which would be the hours that they work and this goes up to 41 so a good scale for this would probably be to go up by five something like 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 and then maybe I can just do 10 20 30 40 okay so you kinda of think about how you want to do that axis so it's not too too unruly there um, these grade point averages are you know they go up to just up to four right so probably divide this into one two three four and so this would be like a 1.0 a 2.0 a 3.0 and a 4.0 and so um, now we're going to graph these as ordered pairs so this would be 4 3.78 so I'd go 4 on this axis so this is the number of hours worked and this is GPA so I would go 4 on here in 3.78 and it doesn't have to be perfect but maybe a dot like that um, and then let's see 12 3.05 so 12 would be like here 3.05 maybe something like that and it doesn't have to be perfect uh, 20 3.19 so here's 20 and it's gonna go back up a little bit 3.19 is maybe right there and then 28 2.56 so 28 is right below 30 and I don't know maybe something like that <clears throat> and then 41 is 2.09 so right here after 40 I would have 2.09 so something like this so this would be the scatter plot for this data and we looked at these in chapter 2 and we saw that if the if the ordered pairs if the general trend is that they are going down as you go as you go from left to right these are kind of falling <clears throat> and then what that means is you have a negative correlation between these two variables it means that as the number of hours works increases the grade point average seems to be going down um, another thing is we're going to be looking at linear correlation between the variables which means if these things lie or the closer these ordered pairs lie along some line then we're gonna say the stronger the correlation 
And these here, they really do a good job. They really kind of lie upon some line. And so the correlation here is really strong. So this would be negative correlation. And in particular, it's a pretty strong negative correlation because the ordered pairs, they're not that scattered. They kind of lie along that line. So let me show you some other examples down here. We'll say this is X and Y. And um, so if the, if the dots are maybe a little more scattered, like this, you can kind of see that there's this general downward trend to the data. And so you would say that there's a negative correlation uh, but it's pretty weak. This is fairly weak. This one here would be strong. Okay. Um, and then if the dots were going up, let's say the dots were rising, maybe like this. And, and you can see that they're lying upon a line there. This would be positive correlation and then maybe I could say fairly strong fairly strong because they do seem a little more scattered than this one but not that much more so it's fairly strong positive correlation okay and then the more scattered they are the weaker the correlation becomes let me do one more example let's say these ordered pairs are such that these are kind of scattered through the plane like this and then if I were to say are these ordered pairs are they kinda do they have a general downward trend or a general upward trend you just kinda look at that and you, you don't know they're just pretty randomly scattered so in that case there would be no correlation between the two variables or at least the correlation, if there is a little bit, would be very, very weak correlation between the variables. So the first thing we want to do in this section here is to learn how to calculate a number that actually measures the strength of the correlation between the two variables. And this is called Pearson's correlation coefficient. And so let me give you a short little definition here. Pearson's correlation coefficient. So this is basically a number that measures the string and direction of linear correlation between two variables. So it's going to be a number that measures the, the strength and the direction of linear correlation between the variables. So the direction is basically whether it's going up or down. Okay? And so we're going to have either, if it's a positive number, it's going to be a, a positive correlation. If it's a negative number, it's going to be a negative correlation. Now the strength is how closely these lie along some line. And, um, what we're going to find out is our correlation coefficient is going to be between negative 1 and 1. And so the closer these lie on a line, the closer they're going to be to negative 1 or 1. Okay, so this would be pretty close to negative 1. That would be pretty close to 1. And if they're scattered, then it's going to be closer to 0. And if it's no correlation, then and if it was truly no correlation, completely randomly scattered, then the R would be equal to 0. So let's actually write this out. Um, let's say how to interpret R. 
And so R is on a scale here of negative 1. We could say R equals negative 1 to 1. And if it were, and then right here in the middle is 0. R equals 0. So let me do this one first. If R was exactly 0, then these would be exactly randomly uh, scattered and there would be absolutely no correlation between the variables okay and then if R is below 0 negative you would have negative correlation above 0 you would have positive correlation and the closer you get to negative 1 or 1 the stronger the correlation so if it were actually equal to negative 1 then this would be perfect positive correlation and or positive uh, linear correlation and what it would mean is that these would actually be ordered pairs that lie on a line a single line and so this would be perfect positive or a perfect I'm sorry negative I said positive I mean negative perfect negative correlation and then here at 1 you would have perfect positive correlation so these would be ordered pairs that actually lie on some line but now the line is sloped upward and so there would be an, a line that passes through each one and this would be perfect positive correlation so perfect negative correlation perfect positive correlation and so you're somewhere on that scale so if you were close to here if your R was close to there you know you would have ordered pairs that are sloped downward and maybe just a little bit off not very much kind of like the first diagram that we did and then the closer you get here closer you get to zero the the less strong the correlation and these are going to be pretty scattered this one's pretty close to zero so it's still in the negative direction but it's really scattered by the time you hit zero there's no correlation and then over here this is positive correlation so this would be maybe something like this it's actually a little further away from zero on this side than this one is and so maybe it's a little not quite as bad right but it's still fairly weak and then you get really close here to one and then these are really strongly positively correlated right and um, and by the time you hit one then you're perfectly positive correlation okay so either perfect negative correlation perfect positive correlation right in the middle no correlation and then your your R is going to be somewhere on that scale and you see zero is just one point on this scale and so really very rarely will you have perfect no correlation if you could call it that or have absolutely no correlation it could be a number really close to zero on the negative or positive side and you wouldn't be able to see the correlation there but there would still be slightly a little bit of correlation Okay, so in the next video, we're going to learn how to calculate this number.